In this video, we're going to go over the Mechanic LT201 vacuum pen. We have requests every single day to go over tools that we carry and sell on our e-commerce website. Unfortunately, I cannot do reviews every day, but I'm trying to get to a point where I do it more often and I go over tools and supplies that we carry and sell on our e-commerce website. Every item, every tool that we sell has been approved by myself. We only carry it and sell it because we approve of that product, whether it's a tweezer or it's a hot air station or it's a soldering station or it's a vacuum, uh, it's a fume extractor or whatever the case may be. It has been approved by myself as a good product and that's why we carry it. For example, the thermal camera, the Unity thermal camera that we sold a lot of and we have a lot on back order. We sell it because we approve of that product. I use the FLIR E60 camera. Does the Unity compare to FLIR E60? No, it does not. FLIR E60 is a much better camera, a much higher refresh rate, better resolution, and more features. So how come you are selling the Unity thermal camera if you do not think it's as good as the FLIR E60? FLIR E60 is a $6,000 camera. Unity thermal camera is $395. It's the best value for the money. It has good enough resolution, it has good enough refresh rate and with the macro lens you can see everything in detail so the camera is amazing for the value because if you get the same spec camera a FLIR brand you can expect to pay three four thousand dollars but you are paying only three hundred and ninety five dollars with everything that you get with that camera so we think it's an amazing value for the price and it does the job just as good as the FLIR E60. FLIR E60 has more features but that camera will do the job just as good and that's why we carry it and sell it. Same thing goes for tweezers or uh, the screwdriver set, which I never reviewed from Best. That's an amazing set. I never went over this product, but I use it every single day, and the bits are just amazing. The handle, awesome. Maybe I'll do a review on it in the future, but that's one amazing screwdriver set. Today, we're gonna go over the Mechanic LT201 vacuum pen. I have used a lot of vacuum pens in the past, and I never thought much of them until we got a sample of the Mechanic LT201 pen and we ended up buying a large batch of these pens because I loved it. I loved how functional that pen is and I love the fact that when it grabs onto a chip, it does not let go, unlike the cheaper ones that I used in the past. This is not an electrical pen. This is not a battery operated pen, which you can buy for maybe in the hundreds from Hakko or other brands, but this is a manual pen where you press on the button, you press the pen on the chip, let go of the button, and that vacuum nozzle will suck onto the chip and you can hold the chip. I mean, when should you use a pen like this? Let me first go over what's inside the package. I do not want to take long making this video, but I want to quickly show you what's inside the package. You get a tube like this, pen and three vacuum nozzles. If you open up the cover, maybe I can switch to the top camera I have here, like this. You get a pen and three nozzles. You have the small nozzle, which looks something like this. Uh, you cannot see a black on black. Anyway, you have a small nozzle you have a bigger nozzle, which is not bent. And you have also this nozzle here, which is also not bent. And we're gonna try this together. Okay, so install the nozzle on the pen. And now what we can do is we heat up a chip on the board. The chip is big. Maybe the chip is too big to grab with a tweezer. So we heat up the chip, we press the button, press that nozzle over the chip, let go of the button and you can grab the chip. We're gonna go over it in this video so I can show you how it works. And like I said, it's nothing like anything I tried before. I tried some cheaper ones, which I did not think much of, but they got me with this sample. They got me with the sample. Let's go over this Mercedes-Benz key fob. And this is the NEC chip. I mean, for this chip, I can honestly grab it with my tweezer but it tends to slip because look at how wide the chip is and look at the tweezer. Maybe we can make the image a bit brighter. The tweezer does not seem to get a good grip on the chip because of how big the chip is. 
And if I try to grab it from here, very difficult. When the chip is hot and I'm trying to pull the chip off the board, sometimes the chip slips and falls down and it can knock off other components on the board. So I'm always super careful when I'm grabbing the chip. Sometimes what I do is I grab the chip by the pin here. I grab it from here, I heat up and then I lift. That can be done. But what if you are working with a chip that has a lot of tiny components on the sides and you do not have much room to grab that chip, then the vacuum pen is a great tool. Let me demonstrate how the vacuum pen works. Let's go for this one here. I always have trouble grabbing onto that chip. Fume extractor. Now, what I like about the nozzles on this pen is they are heat resistant. So I can heat up the chip while that nozzle is on the chip. It's not gonna melt away. We're gonna heat up the chip until we see solder melt. And then I can press on the button. We're gonna push down on the chip. I'm gonna let go of the button and lift. Look at this. The vacuum pen does not want to let go of the chip. Okay, I was able to grab that chip with the vacuum pen. That's an amazing vacuum pen. It's not electric, it's not battery operated, but it's manual. And look at the way it's grabbing on the chip. And before I solder it back, I just want to show you how that chip is grabbing on, how that pen is grabbing onto the chip, and not how the chip is grabbing onto the pen, vice versa. Okay, right here. Let's try to solder that chip back on the board. What I can do is align the chip with the pins. Just like that, I let go of the button and the chip fell down. And now I can work on and solder that chip. Or let me just grab that chip again, press the button, let go of the button and lift. I can align it like this perfectly and then I can go over it with my hot air station while I'm pressing down on that chip. Remember, the nozzle is heat resistant. I do not know how heat resistant it is, but right now I'm at around 320 degrees Celsius. Let go, and the camera is not in focus because I do not have three hands, unfortunately, right now. Here, I focused it, okay? So press on the button, let go, and the chip is soldered back on. How amazing is that pen? Now we're gonna try to remove a chip of the Minimax tuner, and the chip that we're gonna attempt to remove is a big one. Let me show it to you under the camera. We're gonna attempt to remove this big chip here. We cannot grab that chip by our tweezers because the chip is big and it's very difficult to handle with just a tweezer. Unless we grab it by the edge, by one of the pins, and we do it that way. So we're gonna secure this in our board holder. We have sold more of those board holders than any shop in the US combined. A lot of them. One of the best board holders I've used. Okay, so let's attempt to desolder this chip or an even bigger one, this one here. I do not know if that small nozzle will be able to grab that big chip, but we can try. We can also use the big nozzle, which is this one here. And this tip is not bent, but it's flexible. You see, the tip is flexible. So we can attempt to use this one or we can start with the smaller one. I wanna see, can we grab that chip with the smaller tip? I highly doubt it because this nozzle is small, but we can try it. If I failed, then I'll do the big one. Now that's a big chip. And it's very difficult to grab that chip by a tweezer. Extremely difficult because the tweezer is gonna slip. One way to do it is to grab the chip by the side pin like this, and then we can lift up. That's one way of doing it. But let's try and see if we can grab it with the vacuum pen.
press on the vacuum pen, push down, let go of the button. And the small nozzle is too weak for such a big chip. So we're gonna go for the bigger one, for the biggest one actually. Okay, and let's try again. We're gonna press down on the button, push down. And up. Look at this. Look at this. I was able to grab that chip, that huge chip, with the big nozzle. Now, like I said, the nozzle is not bent, but the tip is flexible. So even though it's not bent, I can go like this, let go of the button, and grab that chip. Okay, so let's do it. I'm going to press on the button, press on the chip, let go of the button. And just like that. Amazing. So I can see myself using this pen anytime I'm working with big chips. I want to desolder a big chip. Or maybe I'm not able to grab a chip properly with a tweezer. Then this pen is amazing. I love the fact that those tips do not burn. They are heat resistant. I see this as something that will last a very long time. Because if heat cannot damage the tip, how else will that pen fail? unless you lose the tip, but you do have three tips that come with the pen. So that's it, quick review. And like always, you can find all the tools that we sell on our website, just log in to northridgefix.com, click on shop, and everything is there. That's it, I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think, and we'll do something else in the next video.